Hello and welcome to this video. So in this one, what I'm going to be showing you is how you can make a HTTP request using the native fetch API with async await syntax. So what I have here in my script already is a get request that I'm handling the result of using the native promises syntax of then and catch. So one disadvantage of using these methods is that you can end up with a bit of nesting. So you can see that already there's some nesting inside the get request function, and there would also be nesting inside the get data function if I was handling this result down here, doing something with it. So in this case, what I'd be doing is inserting a function and then handling the data inside this function. So once again, there would be some nesting. So one way to avoid this is to use async await syntax instead. Now I'm assuming that you have some familiarity with using fetch. If you don't, don't worry. I have some videos on that where I go through in detail how you write a fetch request using the promises syntax. So that should be appearing on screen about now. Now, what I'm going to do in this tutorial is to rewrite this request using async await syntax. So I'll start by replicating the get request function. So the first thing you need to do is make sure that you add the async keyword before the function that allows you to use a wait inside the function to wait upon the result of a promise. If you don't have the async keyword, you can't use a wait and none of this will work. So I'm going to call this function get request as well because I want to replicate it as closely as possible. So a nice thing about async await is that it allows you to write synchronous looking code to handle promises. So I'm going to write the code that looks very similar to just writing code regularly inside of a function. So I want to pass in here the URL and I want to await the result of that fetch request. So fetch returns a promise. So you can use the await keyword before anything that returns a promise. Then I want to check the result of res like I'm doing in the original function. So I can just go ahead and write my if statement. So if the response was okay, I want to return res.json. And res.json actually returns a promise. So what I need to do is also use a wait before it. Okay, so the return value of this function if the request is successful is going to be a JavaScript object because I've converted the JSON file to a JavaScript object now using res.json. And otherwise I want to throw a new error. And that's because the server said it was a bad response. So that's actually it for the first function. So there's less nesting now than there was in the original function where the then method was being used. And also notice that it's more synchronous like. I'm using the return keyword inside this if statement, whereas before I had to put the return keyword before fetch. So now the first function is looking much more like synchronous regular code rather than promise handling using special methods. Now I'm going to rewrite the get data function, which calls get request and then handles its result. So again, I'm going to need to write an asynchronous function and I'll keep the same name. It's going to be get data. It has the parameter URL, which you pass in when you call get data. This calls the get request function and you pass in the URL. Now here, this is returning a promise. So res.json, it returns a promise. So what we can do is await the return value of get request, whatever that's going to be, and then save it in a variable called data. And now without the nesting that I would have had to include before, I can just log the contents of data to the console. Now, finally, to do error handling with async await, you use try catch syntax. So you create a try statement and you wrap whatever it is you're trying to do in that try statement. And then afterwards, write a catch statement. So if there's any error in the try statement, 
then the catch statement will be triggered and I'll just log the error to the console if there is one. Now, because I'm calling the get request function inside the try statement, if there's an error that's thrown in the process of the get request function, such as here in the else statement, then the catch statement is going to be triggered as well. So it's not just a problem within this function, it's also in the previous function as well. So all I need to do now is to get rid of this previous get data function and I want to call get data passing in the URL endpoint that I'm making the get request to. So I'm going to delete this console log because I'm now logging the result to the console inside this get data function. So let's just check before finishing that everything is working in the browser. So I'll open the console log and we see index HTML line 23. We're getting this object back with data, with some data about some users. This is just test data from a test endpoint. These are not real emails. So this is how you can make a fetch request using async await syntax to make the code more synchronous looking and avoid unnecessary nesting. So I hope you found this tutorial useful. If you did, please consider hitting the like button down below this video. And if you'd like to see more content like this, don't forget to subscribe to the channel.